Greetings from the Boogie Down South Bronx. Uh, this is Jeffrey Cortez. I'll be reading another chapter from my quirky novel, Memoirs of Pastor Rajatabla, Pentecostal Private Eye. All right, I'll be reading chapter 10. Uh, as always, the description of the intent of me writing this book and for the readers is written and pasted in the description below as well as where you could purchase a cop a um, paperback paperback copy or a kindle version through amazon.com also if you wish to order it for pickup at a barnes and nobles you could order it online at barnes and nobles and choose the location nearest to you for pickup all right um the main character is a pastor of a small Pentecostal, Spanish Pentecostal storefront church in a metropolitan area. And his name in the book is uh, Raja Tabla. That's his nickname, short Raja, Raja. And he has good observation and problem solving skills. And he is usually approached by people in the community, in the neighborhood, uh, from mem uh, members and leaders of nearby congregations that are asking him to solve a problem, a, a solve a mystery, whether the mystery is based in real concerns or just hearsay and gossip, he goes there free of charge, investigates, and then he journals in his uh, journal, which he has nicknamed Tabla. Therefore, the, the, the inside joke, Raja Tabla. Alrighty, I'll be reading chapter 10, um, which is the key title is Sermon Friendly Fires, Sermon Friendly Fires, and the introductory Bible verse from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, 51, but Jesus answered, no more of this. To give you a quick context of that where I got that verse from this is uh, uh, the time of Gethsemane where Jesus tells his disciples to um, bring swords do you have any swords and then they start saying uh, telling him you know the, the amount of swords they have and then he says that's enough basically he says no more of this All right so uh, so they're ready with their uh, side weapons or whether it be for cutting bushes or or, or making for what whatever reason it is they have these uh, edged items a church reached out to Raha to be their special motivational speaker the dynamic speaker they had contracted for that night pulled out at the last minute and they needed a last minute substitute. They wanted a replacement invited guest, that being Pastor Rajatabla, to inspire their congregation to be bold about their faith. So Raja delivered the good deed passionately preaching his heart out. A week after Raja covered for the preferred pe preacher, the church that invited him complained to the denomination's headquarters that he had spoken very harshly using profanity. Now, Missionary Snow heard about the situation and contacted Raja. Raja had used the terms Ñoña and Ñoñado, which turned out to be unbeknownst to Raja to be vulgar terms to the listeners at the church he had preached at. The missionary, that is a missionary snow, advocated for Raja at the governing body's offices, assuring him that no malice was intended. Their a couple of days ago, I was angry at the ungratefulness of the pastor and his church 
which had asked me to help them out at short notice. Later, they accused me of being very vulgar from their pulpit. Apparently, the insincere pastor and his congregation did not really want to be encouraged and exhorted to live a more effective, godly life for Christ. An old professor and missionary brother, Snow, heard about the situation and met with the pastor and his church members. It turns out that in the household I was raised in, the Spanish terms ñoña and ñoñados were used in the less vulgar manner. At home, it meant a person that was spoiled and softened, or the act of spoiling and softening a person to be virtually useless. But outside my household, in many other Spanish-speaking households, and countries, the term referred to soft feces, soft crap, or becoming a pile of excrement. Pretty gross when you think about it. Anyways, this was explained to me and the misunderstanding explained to the pastor in church. Thanks to Brother Snow intervention, there was much happy Reconcil uh, reconciliation. As I thanked my dear retired professor, he also thanked me for a past misunderstanding and intervention. When I was a Bible school student and intern at a church, missionary Professor Snow and his wife gave a presentation of their work in South America. As they gave a slideshow presentation. At one point, there was a picture of Sister Snow holding a South American critter by the tail. She then announced through the speaker in Spanish, here I am holding a critter. Unfortunately, the term for critter she used was bichos. Now, that term for her in South America would mean critter. But for Spanish speak, the Spanish-speaking audience she was doing the presentation for, it was a vulgar term for penis. So there was a shocked but understanding. So there I was, shocked but understanding what the misunderstanding would be and hoped that the audience understood. So while I looked at the congregants, as they were looking at each other wide-eyed, there was another slide that popped up. It was Brother Snow holding up two critters by the tails. I scrambled for a piece of paper and a pen to pass a note to Sister Snow, but it did not make it to her before she made the next announcement. There is my husband, Brother Snow, holding two bichos. I finally got the note to her with the hopes that there were no more other slides with an or orgy of critters. They weren't such pictures and she continued the presentation. Calmly and without missing a beat, the term bicho stopped making appearances that night. As I thanked Brother Snow, we continued to re reminisce about their time at the Bible college where I was a student and he a professor. We laughed over one memory. It was a Bible college where all students and faculty members were required to attend early morning chapel service prior to the school day's classes. The meeting consisted of corporate praying, singing, worshiping, and listening to a faculty member or visiting clergy deliver a sermon or word of inspiration. Brother Cornerstone, in his late 80s, was loved by all. He was a legend in our movement. Although sometimes he would stumble across words, pause for clarity of thought, we all would respectfully wait, and he never disappointed us. It was his turn to speak this morning. 
he was telling us about the night Jesus was betrayed and how St. Peter took a sword and cut a Roman soldier's ear off. We were all tired and anxious over midterms. Brother Cornerstone suddenly misspoke when he got to the climax of the story when the soldier approached Jesus. And then one of them, one of the disciples, took out a concealed sword, swung it with all his might, and cut the soldier's Peter off. First, we were awakened and startled. Then we were all we all bursted out laughing, nearly peeing on ourselves. Brother Cornerstone lost his preaching composures and laughter. We were dismissed early that day, feeling less stressed about midterms exams. Bendición y bendiciones.